Hello everybody, this is Ronald. We are playing Dungeon Universalis again and this is the first video of my season 2 of um, how to play Dungeon Universalis. And um, yes, this time we are going to have a look at the Dark Player, which is uh, another term for the Game Master, the Dungeon Master, the Overlord and um, there are many other names um, this um, kind of player have in uh, other games. and. Um, I think the most common term is uh, in for board games it's uh, the role of the overlord and um the dark player in Dungeon Universalis is um um the um the evil counterpart of uh, the the brave heroes and um um the whether you are playing uh, um, against a human dark player or playing against an official dark player um it's um always you're always playing against a dark player, um, this way or the other way. And um, so Dungeon Universalis was designed as a one versus many um, gameplay. And so um, not uh, if you have already played other um, dungeon crawlers, maybe like Sword and Sorcery, there's no real um, dark player. The game itself um, uh, is... Um, um, controlling the events of the game, and um, but not as a role, uh, as a dark, as a dark player, as, as, as an overlord or a game master. But in Dungeon Universalis, this is um, the way uh, you, you go is to, to play against a, a dark player, a human one or an artificial one. And um, you see all the uh, material that comes with Dun, um, that is related to the um, the game um, as a dark player. And um, we will have a look um, at all the material now. Um, we will start with all the, the common stuff, uh, the general techniques of a um, dark player. Um, the, the, the human dark player sharing with an artificial dark player. So we will have a look at um, the cards. Um, the dark player has um, to uh, that he can play against the uh, the heroes to make their life harder, and um, uh, in a further video we will have a look at the artificial dark player and the the changes that are coming with him. And so um, yes, I want to start, um, and we um, will have a look at all the stuff. Um, and I will tell you um, everything I know about it, but um, just because I haven't mentioned this um, so for some videos, I guess, um, I am not a kind of professional player or something. Um, I am just a player. I have played the half of the the whole campaign from Dungeon of Souls until now. I'm sharing my experiences with you and all my wisdom, if you can call it wisdom. I, um, I have... Uh, um, um, learned a lot about the game and the techniques behind the game and um, I, I'm, I'm willing to share it with you and um, I, enjoy, I enjoy help you uh, with the game but um, please always read the rule book on your own don't rely just on my videos um, they are an addition and not a replacement for reading the rule book and now after that being said um, I will start and we have a look at the material lying out here all the stuff. This is the scenario die and um, we won't talk about this now because it's just for the artificial dark player and so I will put it away. We'll come to, uh, to that back later. We have here some cards. We have um, this card, this is an achievement uh, points card. We have two counters. We have the rule books and we have a lock. Um, we, we will start with it. And um, unlike maybe decent where you have um, um that you um have heard of uh, maybe a, it's just a famous uh, dungeon crawler um also one was many that re requires um a human um overlord except if you're playing decent 2 against the app decent the second edition and um uh, which still is an, um, uh, a play against an overlord, but it's um, like in Dungeon of Solace, it's an artificial overlord. Um, but now I'm deviating <laughs> away and um, um, let's stick to the topic of Dungeon of Solace. So um, we are playing against um, a dark player if we are the heroes, and um, we will um, have a race, a kind of race, in most of the quests. So, the, what kind of race is it? Um, it's not a timer time array so, uh, in, in moves so we are limited in the moves there are these type of quests um, also in, in Dungeon News House but um, um, the, what I mean is we are 
um, running for achievement. We are the heroes are counting um, um, are gaining uh, achievement points for their brave um, actions they do in slaying monsters and um, solving riddles and, or deactivating traps or whatever. And the dark player is getting points for just doing nothing, just <laughs> for being the dark player. And um, uh, this is the, <laughs> the main thing. Um, um, so, um, but what I've got to tell you in, in, at first um, the the dark player's goal of the whole game um, of Dungeon Heroes Heart is while the heroes are trying to defeat the evil whatever you are, the campaign you are playing against, uh, the evil forces of the orcs, or the evil forces of uh, a, a real bad demon, a big bad demon or whatever, this is the hero's goals. The dark player's goal is always one simple task, to just defeat the heroes and hinder them and getting um, to achieve their quest, their main goal, their campaign goal. Um, so basically you can um, break this down to his, his task is to uh, wipe out the whole hero's party, so everyone is dead, and um, as a reward he will get nothing. This sounds sad. <laughs> uh, this sounds like a bad deal for the for the player of the um, who has to play the dark uh, the dark player the overlord. Um, but um, it's just what it is. So if you have played decent, um, you are you know you are um, if you're winning the, uh, the one quest, you will gain some rewards. You will get new cards. You can play in the next quest uh, against the heroes. Um, while the heroes are leveling with new weapons and new skills, the dark player and uh, the overlord. And descent is also um, leveling up, but not in Dungeon Heroes Hollis. In Dungeon Heroes Hollis, you have always the um, the whole type um, set of cards. You have always the same creatures you can spawn. Um, nothing will change you. Um, uh, uh, meaningless how de efficiently you are when when you are playing the game. So. Um, um, but this doesn't mean that this is a bad role or a boring role. Um, um, for what I've seen, because I never have played as a human dark player before, um, but for what I've seen, um, is that it may uh, that it uh, will be real fun to to um, to annoy the heroes, to try to wipe them out, and um, so uh, maybe uh, you can uh, read some reviews. I think there's a very good one of Paul at the uh, at uh, Board Game Geek, where he's t um, describing um, how fun it is to, uh, to to design own quest and to um, trying to wipe out the parties, and um, yeah. So um, this isn't boring, but it's just you have no rewards for it. The, what you are for why you are counting the achievements, and this is where we are going to start now. During a quest, if it's not otherwise disabled by the quest itself, um, each hero uh, um, is uh, getting achievement points. These those are tracked with this board over here. One, whoop, I try to focus it. This is the achievement tracker. Um, and for each enemy you slain in, um, uh, of a grand class and or an, um, an elite or a champion class, you will get achievement points. So um, maybe let's say um, the, the heroes uh, slaying a, a goblin with a um, which is just a grunt, um, you will get a, one achievement point, and so on and so on and so on. And where to an infinite end, or maybe just to an end of, let's see, 180 points, or 198, 89, 98, so I'm sorry. All right, um, focus again. So also, um, we, we the heroes will get extra points if they uh, have slain the leader. Um, they will get um, uh, up to five achievement points for every successfully casted spell or dispelled spell. So you, uh, as you've um, already watched my videos about magic, you know you can dispel any spell. Um, the the heroes can, and the um, the enemies can too. And um, for every special element or main room they discover, they will get an achievement point. For detecting or disarming a trap, they will get an achievement point. For finding a secret door, for opening a lock, for solving a riddle, um, and this is, uh, should be a separated battle. So this is the end solving the riddle. Now we are we are going to see what uh, when the um, dark player will get an achievement point. But this is it. For every of these actions or, or achievements, they will get a score. 
and they will always always try to um, to um, stick to the uh, or to to, um, to be better than the than the dark player um, because the dark player just getting um, for each round that is for each start of his turns after the heroes have um, have made their actions um, he will get an achievement point so that's it that's very easy for each turn for uh, for um, um, as um, unefficiently the heroes are he will get he, he will get stronger by the achievements and he will get more achievements that's great and every time the heroes try to cheat on the, not to try but also, so they are cheating because they are spending their fortune points to reroll their um, um, their or the dark players um, dice um, or maybe they want to prevent their own death by getting knocked out um, when they spend a fortune point the uh, dark players also getting an achievement point and he will also count his achievements over here on this achievement point tracker. And at the end of the quest, that's also, uh, that's often, uh, um, we have a look at, at the quest book, small um, thing, um, uh, maybe I've found it. Yep, I could have better prepared this or I could have cut it out, but I will can't and so I won't um, uh, all right I got it. I've got one so and every quest has a reward section and here you can see in this quest you will get an extra XP point when the group has uh, scored more achievement points than the dark player and this is um, so, uh, something you can call um, a race a race of these um, player types of the dark players and the heroes to get more achievement points than the other ones to, to get more experience points just for the heroes because the dark player won't evolve in any kind so he won't get an experience point okay but it's uh, uh, upon to him to um, to block the heroes to to get these achievement points to make their life harder or uh, at least bring their life to an end and okay and what's about the other counter over here this is the reserve point counter. We have a lot of points in uh, Dungeon Heroes House. We have fortune points, reserve points, experience points, uh, development points, um, reserve points, value points. I am no joke. I, uh, today I thought about making a small, maybe three minutes video <laughs> about all the points I can find in the game and uh, to uh, <laughs> to make it understandable of what, what, what they are for because there are many... Oh, okay, I'm a deviating way. And um, back to the reserve point counter. This is this counter over here. We have two markers on it to see how many reserve points we have. Maybe let's say 45. But what are reserve points now? Reserve points are um, required for the uh, overlord for the dark player to play the uh, to play his cards. These kind of cards. We will have a deep look in the next video or at the end of this video and let's see how uh, how far this will went. And um, okay, um, the reserve points um, I used to play these cards. They have a cost in the in the corner over here. How how much does it cost? To play this kind of card whatever and um, so um, if you the, the dark player hasn't uh, hasn't any reserve points anymore um, he cannot play the card he has to discard cards to get more points or um, yes that's the only thing may um, yeah let's take this for the moment this is to discard cards is the most common way for him to get more reserve points okay um, so what's uh, the st how to determine uh, with um, which where you the dark player will start into the quest? This is very easy, um, and this is a great system we have in Dungeon Heroes Hollis of the scaling, um, which means uh, it's always calculated by the by the number of heroes that are coming with with the level of the heroes, um, when, and with the equipment or with the companions they have. And they're going into the quest. So this is very easy. We um, take the value points of the heroes. This is uh, the um, the uh, starting card of the hero. So um, this in this case, Khan Lanark has a um, an original value of 13 value points. And uh, let's say he is equipped with a with a rare object, with a magical object. 
Um, this is uh, um, has a value point of three, so we add 13, 3, 16. He is uh, he has a special item, a healing potion, and so he get. Um, this is, has a value point of one, so we add 17 value points. He is accompanied uh, by a human mercenary shooter with a value point of two, so we are uh, we are at 19, and he's also accompanied uh, because we are playing the lone wolf mode where you can have a mercenary and an animal with you. Um, he has another two points, and now if I'm not calculated wrong, uh, wrongly, then we are at uh, 21 points, value points, um, for the character of Larnak. If we have more heroes in our party, then we will add their, uh, their ways too. But this would mean if this is the, the whole party is this is Larnak and uh, his uh, friends, we will set this reserve points to 21. There can be a small modifier if the heroes um, party um, have tried the quest they want to play uh, um, once before, then um, the um, dark player will get two, um, two reserve points <laughs> um, per hero that is starting the quest again. And um, because they were inefficient or they, uh, in the first time, the, player, uh, the dark player's uh, amount will rise to make the, li uh, the life even harder. Okay. And so this is what the reserve pointer, uh, reserve point counter for. So at um, almost every quest you're using it, or almost every, at many quests, let's let's say uh, many quests you use it. Um, the both counters are always uh, often there. <laughs> I'm sorry. And um, okay, let's see what we also have to do for the setup. The small. Um, so we have these great reference cards coming with Dungeon Universalis. We have a card for the setup of the Dark Player. We, were ta we are talking now about it. And we have um, a dedicated reference card for the Dark Player's turn. What he can do, we will talk uh, about this too. And another one, uh, the back side, is also about the Dark Player's turn. These cards are very great and very helpful when you're in the game. Because the information, my one of my most critics about... Um, about Dungeon Universalis is that the information is spread it into, so, into so many chapters or on pages of the the rule book. So you have a chapter at the, at the very beginning of the book. This is called Setup, and this is a, a great name because it's about the setup and um, you, you are how to set up the game. Everything I told you just before um, is standing there, written down there, and um, here's a book. A chapter about the dark player setup and what to do and what we are, I will show you next. And um, but this chapter ends because the setup has ended, and now we are talking about actions and we are talking about combat and damage and whatever. And very late in the book, I have made a bookmark, but I can't find it. Ah, yeah, oh, it's over here. There's a whole um, chapter about the dark player itself himself itself. Oh, I'm, I'm very sorry. Um, I'm not gender neutral in this um, because uh, English isn't my first language, so I will stick to um, telling about he and his uh, when I'm talking about the Overlord, the Dark Player, um, even uh, if it uh, could be um, um, a female Dark Player, but I'm not familiar, very familiar to the there and they and uh, you can use in, in English. So I will stick to he Please don't be offended by this. Um, um, the whole chapter, but whoa, I'm sorry. <laughs> Finally, some action in my videos, great. Um, there's a whole chapter about this, but it's spread it about over the book again, and my book is falling apart. I'll have to fix that later. But back to the dark player. Um, the setup of the dark player. So if you're going to play an adventure as a dark player with the heroes, you will have to choose what kind of adventure you want to make, you want to play. So usually you check the campaign and quest book, open it, and um, let's see, there are many, many uh, quests in there. Um, and uh, you will check the part for the setup, what you have to do. Maybe, maybe you have to discard some cards uh, from the beginning that you can't use in that 
thing. But you have to check the whole setup if you're playing as the Dark player. And um, you will have a look at the map and the special tiles and the special elements that are here in the game. And uh, you will have to read this. And you will, have, you will see there's always a faction that is used in the game. There's a goal and there's a faction. And the faction are the enemies you are playing with. And so the, the next thing when we are going to play as a dark player is we will check the best cherry. Best cherry, whatever it's called, whatever it's pronounced on me. And uh, let's see, for example, the great orc tribes. I hope the focus is well. And um, this is the best cherry um, where you have all the. Um, uh, the enemies you can use in this um, scenario when you're playing with this faction. And um, there's the description of the, um, the enemies themselves. And there's uh, something called a spawn table. And so if you're playing as a human dark player, you will always have the option to spawn all the enemies on your own. There's no one who's telling you you have to um, place a black orc in the upcoming room or a shooter or whatever or two dire wolves. You have everything in your own hands. You can play your cards. Um, the cards say you can spawn this kind. Uh, the, the, you can spawn a special creature. You can play uh, spawn creatures with a value points of maybe four. So you can choose if you want to play. Um, you want to spawn four wild orcs with a value points of one or two dire wolves with value points of two or a mix of them everything is in your own hands or if you're not so creative or not so familiar with the game you have the spawn table and you can just roll a die and after that you can see oh you have played an enemy spotted card you have rolled a, um, a five so this is what you're going to spawn in the room and so you have almost nothing to do and uh, nothing to configure and nothing to choose this is great and um, you can see the spawn table is um, you're rolling with a 1d6 but there's a result of 10 which doesn't make many sense if you haven't read if you haven't read the first pages of the best cherry where you have uh, some more detailed information about that you are adding a plus one for um, different locations like the, the, the this is a high experienced uh, group or whatever and then you have to add um, more points to your dice your die result when you are checking the spawn tail okay so you should always have a look at this uh, at the best cherry at the faction before you are entering the adventure because you want to check um, who you are playing with as a dark player, who are the monsters, what are their, um, their, their options, who are the good ones, who are the bad ones, and uh, who want to use. And the next thing is, there's always a leader in a quest. Almost always. And let's see, Temple Ruins, as there's a leader, maybe there's a faction, Creatures of the Night in this quest. And um, there's a leader, let's see where's the leader. The quest leader is at the um, bottom here. The quest leader is a golem. Um, it is spawned at no cost and blah blah blah. So you're checking again the best tray. Creatures of the night. Let's see if I can find them easily. Creatures of the night. Great. The first faction in the book. And we have a... what was it? A golem? Hmm... Creatures of the night, check. No golem. Oh, too bad. Once again, the quest leader is a golem. Yeah. Can anyone see a golem over here? Okay. Maybe there's a special rule for the golem. Oh, let's say we are playing against the Lord of the Dead as a leader. And um, I will write in the comments where th where what's, what's up with the golem. Um, we, so the leader of the quest is, uh, let's say it's the Lord of the Dead. And um, you have to pay the reserve points for this leader 
at um, b before you start the game. So if you have a, if the hero's party have a value points of 21 and this uh, Lord of the Dead requires uh, ha have a value point of 20, you have to pay 20 and you will start the quest with one reserve point. That's it. The, most of the enemies um, have um, optional upgrades like spending plus three VP to have him regeneration skill and level gaze or whatever or better better weapons um, here, here it's over here uh, a broadsword for one extra VP or whatever you do not pay these upgrades at the moment when you start the, the quest you're just paying the basic cost of the um, of the quest leader um, in the moment you are placing the leader on the board then you may upgrade him and then you have to pay the value points, the reserve points you have to spend for him, for um, um, equal to the value points you are using. So reserve points are the value points, but they are not the value points. And I hope you get it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. And um, let's check my list. Um, yes, we are there. We we are we have read the quest sheet. What we want to do, uh, what what we are where we are going. We have checked the faction. We have chosen the quest leader, or the quest has told us who's the quest leader. Then we don't. Uh, and then we can't choose. And then, as a human dark player, we can also give the. Oops, I'm sorry. It's over here. We can. Um, choose a magic object for the leader and this is great because um, this will um, power the leader up in a very um, tight way and this is um, a thing the artificial dark player can't do we have an artificial uh, dark player set up and um, I will tell more about it when we are talking about the artificial dark player so for the moment you, you may know you can pay you can give the leader a magical object and you have to pay for it as well because it's in the magical object is like the, the short bow we have seen here from from the goblin you have to pay the three VP in reserve points during the setup okay um, and then we are almost done, but then we have to build the card decks. Once again, the cards are um, separated into three categories. We have encounter cards with this symbol here. We have obstacle cards with this symbol, usually traps or any other kind of obstacles. And then we also have power cards, which are mainly boosts for the enemies to make uh, to give them a healing skill skill for a limited time or for just one one hit one time so okay we will have a look a deeper look at in, in another video where i'm going through all the cards or most or most of them to show you what you can do with a, and uh, with a, as a dark leader but then you will you will have to do where during the setup you will um you will build the decks that you can use in the quest and so there are um you will take all the encounter cards, and then I have to check this, the cards. Okay, um, you will always take a special creature card, put it away for the moment, and you take all other cards, shuffle them, and uh, draw two cards per each hero entering the game. And this is uh, important as always. It's just for the hero, not for the mercenaries or the animals that are accompanying the heroes it's just for the number of the heroes so if you have three heroes and maybe three mercenaries you just stick to the three heroes and draw six cards from the shuffled deck two four six and this is your encounter deck you can place it next to the symbol over here this is very easy this is the special creature i've put away you will see in a few seconds for i have done this then you will shuffle all the um, power cards and all the obstacle cards into one deck and draw five cards per hero randomly from this deck and then you will form the um, power and let's pretend this is the right number of cards the power and obstacle deck so they are combined in this deck this is just for encounters this is for obstacles and power cards so when you're drawing a card from this deck you don't know if you're getting a power card or an obstacle card surprise surprise 
and you don't know and because there are many cards this is just an obstacle deck and you have almost the same number of uh, power cards and you have a lot of variety in the um uh, you have a lot of variety in the cards except you um the quest tells you that you have to remove these or those cards from the um, from the deck from the beginning on so you have and you, in, in many um in many quests you don't have the options to uh, to use a rock slide or a fireball trap or, or whatever so the quest will tell you all right and then you will draw one card from this pile uh, pile and together with the special creature you've already drawn from the beginning separate from the beginning this is your hand card these are the, your hand cards you have on your hand and um, you have always uh, a limit for these cards um, so uh, per hero you have two you may have two cards per hero so we are uh, again with three heroes you have a limit of six cards in your hand that you can have in your hand um, this is uh, you have a minimum of four cards and a maximum of ten cards um, uh, so if you're exceeding um, yeah that's that's it okay um, so even you are playing with against one player with one hero you will also you will always have four cards that's what i wanted to say and um, every time it's your turn as a dark player you will you uh, you draw one card from one of these piles of one of these decks so you have the uh, the option to you you want you want to um, spawn new enemies then you will draw an encounter card so you can have a wandering creature now and you can um, play it in your turn or you want um, more obstacles or more power cards to boost your your uh, enemies your your figures then you can draw a card from the obstacle and power deck and see what you're getting okay and now we are already in the uh, in the turn so we have drawn a card at the beginning of the turn um, you cannot do this anymore if um, the combat has started in the main room and um, the, which is the, 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 the final fight and when the heroes have accomplished their mission you uh, you are also not allowed to draw any cards um, then you have these cards in your hand and you, if it's your turn you can play um, um, you can play as many cards as you want from zero to how many cards you have on your, ha on your hand it's your um, decision and uh, if you want to play them you have to pay the costs over here so if you want to play the card fortune we are ignoring what it does um, then you have to pay and you have to spend two points let's, let's say we have 33 points we have to lower them we have to discard uh, we have to put this card away this is gone for the whole game we cannot return it and we will uh, apply the effect you can see here if um, you have a card on your hand you don't want to play you can't play and you don't see you will ever be able to play it or you just need more points for for another card then you can always discard a card and this is the icon uh, in the bottom right here um, you will discard this card and it's uh, the you can't use this effect it's discarded and to onto the same pile and um, then you will get the amount of points over here as reserve points so we will rise raise our reserve points count okay that's the special creature card is an, a special card like a special creature great um be with an x because if you're reading this um, then we see we have to blah 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 we have to spend as many points as we are um, as, as the value points the creature has so this is why he has an X if you have uh, asked yourself that um, but there are let's see wandering creatures wandering creatures reinforcements so maybe reinforcements uh, you have six reinforcement uh, six points you have to um, to, um, to spend a res six reserve points oh my god it's too late and then you can spawn monsters that are worth six points from the best cherry of the faction you are playing with great and that's it so and when you uh, um, as a summary if uh, it's, if it's your turn you draw you draw one card from one of your uh, one of your piles you um, 
You can discard cards at any time to get more reserve points. You can play as many cards as you want when it's your turn. Um, and as long as, as you can pay for them. Um, you have a hand card limit. Um, and that's it. That's it. What, what's your turn mostly about? When it's not about um, moving your miniatures, you have already spawned. Um, if you are spawning creatures, there are some limits. You can check the um, the rule book. Uh, so you have to more uh, you have to to spawn more grunt level enemies than uh, champions or elite, and you are you have to um, um, back again. I had to um, put a charger on my camera. I'm sorry for that. Um, so um, yeah, um, when you're spawning, you have to. They have some uh, limits, like you have to um, spawn more grunt level creatures than elite and champions, or you have to spawn uh, more um, um, more melee f fighters than long ranged or ranged fighters. And um, yeah, just please check the rulebook for this. And that's about the turn of the dark player. So the heroes start, make their turn, then it's your turn, then you will um, then you will increase your when your when your turn starts, you will increase according to the um, achievement points uh, card. You will um, increase your um, achievement point for one for just um, having <laughs> for just starting your turn and. Um, then you will draw one card, play as many cards as you want, or discard cards, and that's it. Then you're in the game. And then um, you can play obstacles, you can play um, power cards, you can play, you can spawn enemies with the encounter cards. And we have, we will have a look at all these cards in the next video. And in the video after that, we will have a look at the artificial dark players and the differences to the human dark player. And um, after that, like I've already spoiled in the interlude video, um, we will have a look at uh, uh, my own um, my own recent um, artificial dark players variant. And um, yeah, this is what's uh, what I want to do next. And uh, I hope I, uh, uh, if you can see this, I, I had managed to. Uh, merge the videos, uh, video parts, and um, I think I've already talked about for 40 minutes again. And um, we are very, you're very brave if you have reached this um, this uh, <laughs> this point of the video. Thank you for watching. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. Um, there are some more videos about Dungeon of Stars coming. Um, I want to make a, a dungeon crawl or playing a, a quest um, um, with real time and, and to show again like I did with an epic event. If you haven't seen this, there are videos about me playing in, uh, an epic event. Um, but I wanted to make a real quest to show um, how this is going. And um, hopefully we will have a look at the basic rules that are coming um, out in, in some month. And so, yes. Um, thanks again for watching this, have a great day and see you again.